There are two NASCAR driver announcements on Thursday, and I think one of them maybe caught people by surprise. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt, and it was announced on Thursday morning that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has signed a three-year extension to remain with JTG Doherty Racing in that number 47 car. He, of course, got the team their biggest win in the 2023 Daytona 500. In his time with the team, four seasons plus a little bit of change this year, he's had eight top five finishes, of course his one win, and he's made the playoffs one time last year with that win at the Daytona 500. But I think this announcement maybe caught people by surprise a little bit because just over a week ago, Adam Stern from the Sports Business Journal reported that co-owners of JTG Doherty Racing, Jody and Tad Geschichter, the J and the T portion of that acronym, were looking to potentially go somewhere else. And that potential landing spot for them would be Joe Gibbs Racing, taking their Kroger sponsorship with them and Tad taking on a role of some capacity at Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, I have heard a couple of times over the past week or since that came out that there was a Chevy team also angling to try to land uh, both the team, the charter, Jody and Tad Geschichter, as well as that Kroger sponsorship, but that appears like it's not happening. And if you read the press release that the team put out, that's kind of the most telling point out of this because the quotes that they had from the ownership group of the 47 team were from Gordon Smith, a co-owner in the team, and Brad Doherty, another co-owner in the team. There was no quote from Jody or Tad Geschichter and no mention of Kroger anywhere in that press release. So if you want to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat here, you can do a little bit of sleuthing and a little bit of detective work, connect the dots, if you will, and you can kind of come to the conclusion that the Geschichters are likely out of the 47 team at the end of the year, likely taking their Kroger sponsorship with them not likely almost definitely taking their Kroger sponsorship with them and going over to Joe Gibbs Racing or whatever other team they will likely land at Gibbs apparently is currently the uh, front runner in the clubhouse the leader in the clubhouse for their sponsorship and services so where does that lead the 47 team at well, it looks like Gordon Smith and Brad Doherty, at least based on what we saw in that press release will continue to be the co-owners of the team Ricky Stenhouse Jr. spoke to SiriusXM NASCAR on Thursday morning as well, and he said that there's some exciting things in the pipeline for this team. Is that him just having, you know, corporate speak and just wanting to be optimistic about the future of this team and hoping that he can will it to victory again? Potentially. Could it also mean that there is a possible partnership, alliance, merger coming up for the 47 team going into 2025? Also possibly on the table. We know there are multiple teams looking for charters. Multiple teams would like to add another car. Right now, the 47 team, outside of the Wood Brothers, eh, kind of, are the only single team entry that has a charter. So they're the only one car team out there. Do they want to maintain and continue to be a one car team? More than likely not, because right now it seems like they are definitely on the outside looking in when it comes to a competition standpoint. We see multi-car teams being the dominant forces in the garage area. So with the 47 team, potentially, you know, consider a merger. And who could they merge with? Well, we already know that Legacy Motor Club and 2311 Racing are both looking to potentially add charters, assuming that we ever get to a charter agreement deal here. Maybe they could be landing spots for the 47 services. That would allow them to bring a third car in with an established driver, an established team already. Obviously, have to change to Toyota uh, bodies, Toyota engines, everything like that. But that would allow them to start up that third team and kind of, you know, hit the ground running before they make a driver change at some point in the future. If they wanted to. I'm not saying Ricky's going to get out of a ride. Obviously, this is all purely speculation. Just doing some, some free thinking here, if you will. But it does seem like there might be some things in play for the 47 car going into 2025. And if they maintain and you know remain a one car team, that would make sense as well. But looking at their current ownership group, assuming that you know the Geschichters are selling that charter or their portion of the equity in that charter to Gordon Smith and Brad Doherty, and those two are going to maintain control of the team, you know, there's some possibility, some movement there that could happen. And for the Geschichters, if they move over to Joe Gibbs Racing, they're taking a massive sponsor with them, a Fortune 100 sponsor, over to Joe Gibbs Racing for one of those cars over there. And that is a massive get for that team. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with the 47 car. For right now, all we know is that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. does have a three-year extension starting in 2025, obviously through the end of the 2027 season. So we'll have to wait and see how all of that plays out and just find it a little curious that the Geschichters were not involved in that press release whatsoever. 
Before we get to the next driver announcement real quick, good news. For everybody that asked, where can I buy the Support Your Local Short Track t-shirt? It is now live at breakhard.store. You can also get the link in the description below. There's a couple of other t-shirts up there as well. They're all printed on demand. They're printed on comfort colors, so they're a little bit heavier than your typical like Gildan or you know Bella Canvas t-shirt. Great quality here as well, so take a look at the shop if you get a chance. Moving on to the other driver announcement on Thursday. That came from Junior Motorsports. Dale Jr. once again has another announcement for that number 88 Xfinity car. And they got everybody all hyped up on Wednesday night when they said this driver has made a start for JRM in the Cars Tour. And they will become the 10th driver to also make a start for JRM in the Xfinity Series. And that part right there... Uh, that portion of the tweet had me really questioning the reading comprehension of a lot of NASCAR fans because they were immediately like, it's going to be Casey Kane. What? Why, when did ever, when did Casey Kane make a Cars Tour start for Dale Jr.? And he's already made starts for Dale Jr. in the Xfinity series, so that made no sense whatsoever. We also saw people say Corey Day. Uh, I think Corey Day is a massive talent. I'll have a video out about him in the very near future. But again, he hasn't made a Cars Tour start for Dale Jr., so why would it be him? Some people mention Jane McMurray. Again, somebody has already made a start. Josh Berry was a name that was listed. Why would Josh Berry be the 10th driver to make a start for JRM? He's already done that. Oh, man, the people in the comments really had me questioning my sanity and the sanity of this fan base at times. But no, it was nobody that anyone guessed. Instead, it will be Connor Mozak, who has never found a ride that he could not buy, We'll be in that 88 car for two races this summer. Once for the Chicago Street Race and another time at the at Watkins Glen. No, not Watkins Glen. At the Roval. Watkins Glen goes to Connor Zilich. Sorry. Mozak will be in the car at Chicago as well as the Roval. Now, Connor Mozak does have two top, fin top 10 finishes uh, in the Xfinity Series when he was racing for Sam Hunt Racing. Both of those came on road courses. The kid is a very good road course racer. Do not get me wrong there. He's Really good in Trans Am. He's been really good on road courses. He did finish 34th at the Chicago Street Course last year, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. But there was a lot of things that went into that. Connor Mozak, though, on ovals, he's a bit like a cruise missile. Unguided. He doesn't really know who his target is. And then he locks onto it, and you're like, oh, crap. We're about to get nailed here by him. And we saw that happen at the Charlotte Arca race last year. That kid was just absolute cold trickle level of hit everything on the racetrack on an oval. He does have an oval victory in Arca last year driving for Joe Gibbs Racing at Kansas, so hats off to him. He did run a full cars tour schedule in 2020 with JRM. Uh, he ran 10 races, which was a schedule that year, finished in the top 10 eight times and had three top five finishes. So he does at least have some oval experience behind him. He was part of the Toyota group last year with Sam Hunt and Joe Gibbs Racing. This year, he's aligned with Chevy, racing part-time in the truck series for Nice as well as Spire, and now making select starts uh, for JRM in the Xfinity series. Connor Mozak is not a what we would consider a blue chip prospect. He's not a five-star recruit. He's not a four-star recruit. On road courses, he might be a four-star. On ovals, he's about a two, maybe a three-star at best if you're looking at 247 sports or something along those lines. So for Connor Mozak to get this opportunity, that's massive. And on a road course, it's even better because JRM is going to bring a great road course car for him. Like I said, he's a very stout road course racer. If they had announced that he was going to ovals, though, I'd be like, oh my gosh. I hope the body shop over at JRM is prepared for this, like Tricon's prepared to have Chris Wright in their trucks, because those boys are going to be busy at some point. For Connor Mozak, though, again, I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't think he's, you know, necessarily a bad race car driver. I think he just needs to learn ovals more than he already does. And he has good finishes on ovals. He's been great equipment in the Arca series, um, which I know there's like four to five competitive cars there, and he can finish second to fifth in, in most of those races. He's still finishing them, albeit he might run over 18 people to get there, including four slower cars. They just couldn't figure out how to drive around them. I think this is an OK signing for JRM and for Connor Mozak because it's a road course and that's safe. So let me know what you think about the Ricky Stenhouse Jr. news as well as the Connor Mozak news. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.